Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby, I'm with Fitness is Medicine. Today we're gonna to do another great workout you can do in your home with minimal equipment. We're gonna start off with a row on the ball um, with some tubes. So get a tube set up about chest height, a little bit stronger of a um, weight of band so that you're really working those big muscles in your back. We're also going to need a, um, a ball. Obviously I'm sitting on a ball. If you don't have a ball, that's fine. You can either sit in a chair or stand for that exercise. And we're also gonna need um, a set of dumbbells for some lateral raises, so a little bit lighter on the weight on those. And then if you have some sort of cup or cone or something, we're gonna do a balance exercise with it. So make sure you come into these workouts warmed up and ready to go. Walk around the block, walk up and down your stairs, do some exercise equipment if you have it, and come in ready to move. Okay, so we're gonna start off. Um, many times I like to do this exercise standing. But sometimes if you're experiencing low back pain or if you're really having trouble isolating those muscles and like um, keeping your neck out of it, for instance, or if your knee is hurting so it hurts to stand, things like that, um, it's good to be able to sit down and do it. So if you don't have a ball, you can sit on a chair or like I said, if you're pain free, you can do this standing as well. Um, adding a ball though does give you just a little bit of um, core engagement. So we're gonna pull straight back. Remember, always keep your shoulders down and back. So before you get started, make sure you're not up like this, trying to pull, pull those shoulders down. And then we're gonna pull straight back. So nice and slowly, both directions. Control that band, both directions. Or nice and slowly, squeeze your shoulder blades like you're squeezing a pencil between those between those shoulder blades. Really use those muscles. Drive your elbows towards the back of the room. Breathe. Never hold your breath on any of these. And one more. Good. Slowly relax. And that's our row for the day. Okay, next we're going to do a side lunge. And I'm gonna have you do a reach with the lunge. So. Um, to start with, one of the best ways to start by doing a side lunge, start doing one, is to do it at your kitchen countertop. And the reason being is because um, many times, commonly, when people start to do a lunge, they end up going forward. So I'll kind of go to the side here, forward like this. And I don't want that. You really want to sit your hips back. So by using the kitchen counter, the sink, you can really kind of go over, sit back, and almost, you're just using it for a little bit of balance and support so that you can sit back. So when I lunge out to the side, I'm sitting back. My hips are going far back. So I'm putting the weight in this heel. Now, I'm also going to keep this leg straight because I'm lunging over to this side, and then I'm gonna lunge over to this side. So if you've got the lunge down and you know it and you don't have hip or knee pain with it, you can go ahead and grab a weight or like a little medicine ball or a small kettlebell or something, and we're gonna add a lunge reach to it. Now, get your lunge down first. So use that kitchen counter to sit back, keep your chest up tall. You're keeping this leg straight. Also, you're keeping your knee over your ankle. So when you go over, you're not going over like that. You're keeping your knee right over your ankle forward and sideways. So if you think about it, it needs to stay there, not go forward like that, okay? All right, so we're gonna go 10 on each side. If this is painful for you, do a smaller range of motion. You don't have to go very deep. You can just do a smaller range of motion like that. All right, I'm going to add a reach with it. So find your level and join us. Here we go. So I'm gonna reach over my opposite foot I'm keeping my chest up tall. Obviously I'm leaning over, but notice that my hips are going back. My back is still straight. I'm not rounding like this, okay? Nice and tall. Everything is in a good range of motion here, a healthy range of motion that should be pain-free. Remember to do a smaller range of motion if you are having any pain. The other thing to think about with these is to squeeze that glute as you stand up. So really 
working those quads and glutes on this one. Deep breaths, keep breathing with this. If the weight is too much for this, just focus on the lunge. You can do it at like a bar top or a kitchen countertop. I really like a kitchen sink or even a double sink in your bathroom works pretty good for this. One more, two more on each side. Reach, keeping those hips back. Hips always go back. And 10. All right, good. If you have any questions on those, please don't hesitate to message me. Okay, next we're going to grab that ball back. We're going to do a little bit of um, balance here and core. So I want you to sit up nice and tall on that ball. If you have any fear of instability on the ball, do it next to something sturdy. Do it next to a wall or, you know, again, your kitchen sink. Um, also, hanging onto the ball gives you a little bit more stability. We're going to march. So I want you to slowly lift one foot up off the ground at a time. And the key here is slowly. If you can only get that much off, that's okay. Find your range of motion that's comfortable, yet challenging. Now, also, when you're marching here, I want you to stay as stable as you can, because this is a big hip stabilizer as well, so that you're not, you know, kind of crunching down and lifting up. You want to stay as stable as you can, keeping your weight even as much as you can. Remember, you can hang on here if you need to, that will help. If you're doing that and it feels pretty easy, let go and try to lift your knee just a little bit higher. Nice and slow. Nine. And ten. And ten. Good. Okay. Next, we're going to pick up those weights that I told you about. We're going to do a shoulder lateral raises. Um, I'm going to have you stand either in a tandem stance, or if you have balance discs at home, you can stand on your balance discs for this one, or you can try a single leg stance. So kind of where you are comfortable challenging your balance. I'm going to make this even more challenging. We're going to alternate our shoulder raises. So instead of going both at the same time, we're going to do one and then the other side. So your core, especially in your balance challenge, is really going to need to kick in to keep you stable. I don't want lifting like this. You want your shoulders to be level. And you're going to be engaging that core to keep yourself stable here. So wherever you are in that balance challenge, this will be more challenging than if you were lifting both at the same time. Nice and slowly both directions. If you're having any shoulder pain with this, you can, instead of going straight out to the side, you can go a little bit to the diagonal. Or you can grab a little lighter weight. Or you can start here and we'll do one side at a time like this. So you're bending your elbow, making that lever shorter. So we'll do two more, I think, on each side. Do 10. If you're doing this and you're not really following me, try to do 10 on each side. I'm going to add one more to make sure I got there. Okay, good. Now we're going to lower to the floor. Make sure you put those weights down safely. We're going to do some bicycle abs. So, lying on your back. We start many exercises like this. Lie on your back with your feet flat on the ground, your knees bent, and we're going to flatten your back to the floor. So really engage that lower abdominal, your transverse abdominal. Engage that to flatten your back to the floor, and we're going to do bicycle abs. So start with one foot flat, one foot or one knee straight, one knee bent, and then we're going to switch them. So that's the motion while you work on keeping that back flat. Now, if you want, you can lift both off at the same time. If that hurts your back, 
put down one of your feet on the floor. You can put down the straight one or the bent one um, to help that back. And if your abs are just, um, if your back is hurting or if you're having a really hard time keeping your back flat to the floor. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do 10 here. It's really important to breathe on abs. It's one of the more challenging ones to keep your breath steady. So you can kind of find a rhythm with it. Good. So you can either breathe, like breathe in on one whole repetition and then out on one whole repetition. Whatever you do, find a rhythm that works for you and continue to breathe. It's really easy to hold your breath on those core exercises. Okay, now we're gonna stand back up and do a balance exercise. So get up slowly. If you need to sit like this for a minute, make sure your head is um, getting all the necessary blood and oxygen that it needs. And then we're gonna, remember one foot forward, bring that weight back and then stand up. Okay, now we're gonna get those cones or cups um, Today I'm going to use little, I have little furniture sliders that I use for different exercises and I'm going to put them in like a triangle so you can't see this one. So they're in like a little bit of a triangle here and I'm going to stand right here and move them back a little bit. I'm going to stand kind of right in the middle of them with my There we go, I think that'll work better. Nope, sorry, my cameraman isn't doing his, her, her job, his, her job. Maybe that'll be better. Okay, so I'm gonna stand right in the middle of my triangle. Again, do this next to something sturdy so you can hang on, but we're gonna stand on one foot and tap, and tap, and tap. So spread them out to where it's, it's a challenge for you. You're going to reach forward, you're going to reach out to the side, and then you're going to reach back. So your goal is to stay nice and straight here, keeping your hips level. You're standing on one foot, which is a balance challenge and it's a hip stabilizer because you're really having to hold yourself up. If you find yourself doing this, so right now you can see that my hips are level. If I go into it like that, it means that this, this hip is having a hard time hanging on to that stability. So use something if you need it. Really focus. If you have to do two or three and then you know rest and then switch sides, if you find you just can't hold that. All right, we're going to do it. So try for about 30 seconds. Or you can do you know maybe five times through. But whatever, if you're starting to feel a lot of pressure in that supporting hip, then go ahead and switch. Okay, so I'm just going to move this middle one out to that side. Give a little 30 seconds here. Tap, tap, and when bring your foot back to the center each time instead of going tap, 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 tap. I want you to be slow and deliberate about it. So bring your foot back to the center if you need to you can put your foot down in between. But if you don't have to, try not to. See if you can just bring it back, bent. And if you don't not actually touch that back one, that's okay. It's just a kind of a goal for you to aim for. If you don't actually touch it, you don't have to like figure out where it is. I'd rather have you looking forward and keeping that good posture, keeping your chin tucked and not doing this type of thing to watch where your feet are. Okay, that was longer than 30 seconds. All right, that is it for today. So we've got some upper body, some lower body, some balance, some core. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you need any alternatives to any of these exercises. All right, thank you everybody and we'll see you next time.